Okay. So we have our data earn a calculator. What we want to do first is perform linear regression. Um, by now, all of you should have some diagnostics on, but just to remind you, if you do second zero and you go down to the Ds, you can find the word diagnostic on and hit enter and hit enter again. And it looks like we didn't do anything, but that means that R squared and R will appear when we do our linear regression. Um, so let's go back to stat edit and look at the data. There it all is. So we have our X values in list one and our Y values in list two. So I'm going to press stat, calculate, eight for linear regression, um, second L1, comma, second L2, comma, and then vars, Y vars, uh, function, Y1. If you have a menu appeared there, you've got a menu of items to store regression in queue. I've said this a bunch of times, but I want to make sure that you know how to do it. Okay, so let's hit enter and see what happens. All right, so this is this is extremely strong. This is the strongest we've seen in any of the, any other problems that we looked at. Okay, so I ask the question. I always ask you, does that mean that a line is the best model for this set of data? It means that a line fits the data well, but it doesn't mean it's the best model until you check the residual plot. You always just go and check the residual plot and make sure that that's random and so forth. So let's do that. Um, so we can go to second stat plot. Okay. So we'll go to that first stat plot there. We're going to turn it on. We've selected stat plot, which is the first type. The X list, in our case, was second L1. It was in list 1. And remember, every time you do a linear regression, the calculator creates a new set of residuals. Every time. If you do second stat, you're going to the list menu. And usually it's the seventh thing on the list. If not, go down a little bit further. But resid is what you want. Okay, and there it is. It appears. Press zoom 9, and let's take a look at these residuals. Okay. And uh, those look actually pretty good. I mean, you see... You kind of see there's a bunch of random stuff around here. Hold on a minute. Let's, uh, okay, never mind to that. And there they are. You can see there's really no clear pattern. You've got one here that's slightly above, one slightly below. There's another below, one below, almost on it. And then you've got two kind of big residuals towards the end. I'm a little suspicious of this data point. Maybe it's kind of far away from the line compared to the others. But if you had pressed trace, notice if you press trace, none of these numbers are very big. So look at them. Yeah, you're talking about 3 tenths, 0 0.022. Let's go to that big one. And this is uh, 1.74 and negative 2.2. .2. So that's far away, but not really far away. Okay. All right. So we did get a nice random residual plot here. What I'm saying is random. You know, what happens if you get a residual plot and it looked like something like this, maybe? Okay. If I saw something like this, I'd be suspicious that maybe a line is not the best fit for the data. Uh, what would I say? Maybe uh, when we did the original graph and we did the original um, linear regression, we got back an R of like 0.95, which we know means that the line fit the data well. But... Um, what this is really telling me, this residual plot, is that really I'm probably looking at a very small section of something that's really curved, like we talked about earlier. So if this were to happen, like maybe, you know, here's here is the the data points, and you can see they look pretty looks pretty flat, but maybe because we're looking at such a small section of this graph, maybe if we were to let it continue, we had more data, we'd start to find that this trend would start to head upwards. And you would notice that the regression, or this previous regression line at least, would not fit this data well. Okay, obviously we would redo the regression again and we'd get a line that were closer to all these points. But maybe over a bigger domain we would notice that it really start to take a much more distinct curve. So that's probably what's happening here. Um, what does this mean? If this were the case, what it would mean is you can use your line at best fit if you're staying between the lowest x value, whatever the lowest x value is, we'll call this x min and the highest x value, x max, right? So for example, in our calculator, if we go to stat edit for a minute, we look at our data list, as long as x was between 50 and 2000, because 2000 was the biggest number on our list, 
then it would be safe to use the line of best fit to make predictions. If you're going to go far outside of this, you might start to get nervous. It's always dangerous to do extrapolation. Okay, but if you definitely if you see a curved pattern, if you see a curved pattern, then extrapolation is really dangerous. Don't do it. It means that the line's not going to work well in the future at all. Okay, interesting facts. One more little interesting fact about residuals. If we want, we can go to list three, and we can get the calculator to produce the residuals for us. Remember what I said, the residuals are the observed values minus the predicted values. Okay, so the observed values are right here in list two. Those are the y values. So what I'm going to do is get this thing to subtract what I want it to subtract for me. So at the top of list three, I'm going to do second L2, because those are my y values. That's like my observed. Minus. Now, I'd like to get the predicted values. So you just need to remember one thing about how to get predicted values. Um, if I have a line of best fit, suppose I have some equations, a much simpler version. Suppose I have something like this. You know, I did a linear regression. I got y hat equals 3 plus 2x. And I asked you, what's the predicted value when x equals 1? Then all you have to do is do y hat of 1. Take 1, plug it into the line of best fit. So you get 3 plus 2 times 1, which is 5. This is called a predicted y value. It is not necessarily the observed y value. It might be that if we looked at this line of best fit, 3 plus 2x, it'll look something like that. And we went over to x equals 1 here. The point on the line is 1 comma 5. But the observed value, the real data point, might have been up here at 1 comma 6. Okay? So the residual would equal 6, the observed value, minus 5, the predicted value, which is 1. Well, it turns out you can sort of get your TI-84 to do that for you. So you notice I have L2, my Y value is minus. Now what I need the calculator to do is take all the X values in L1 and plug them into the line of best fit. But I can tell it to do that. If I press VARS, Y VARS, enter, enter, there's Y1. Now, if you remember, when we did the regression, we stored the equation in Y1. Now I'm going to press open parenthesis. And you should ask yourself, where are those X values? Well, those X values are in list 1. So I do second 1. There we go. I get L1. I'll close the parenthesis. So this notation means it's going to take all the numbers in L1 and plug them into Y1. That'll give me all my predicted values. And then they're being subtracted from the Y values in L2. And if I hit Enter, it does all those things. Those are my residuals. So that's how the calculator actually calculates residuals. We, I told it to do it, but let me just show you something fun here. Let's go to list four. Go to the top of list four. If there's anything in there, get rid of it. I'm going to clear out my list here. So I'm going to go to the top of list four. And if you remember, we knew that the calculator does residuals for us. So if you do second stat, go find residuals, number seven. Might not be number seven on your calculator. Hit enter. And take a look. Oh, recognize those, right? So it turns out that uh, we were able to, to show how to get the residuals and compare them to the residuals the calculator gave us. Same thing. So it's sort of a fun little fact about the residuals that you should be aware of. All right? You might guess the answer to this, but a question you should know the answer to is what is the sum of the residuals for any least squared regression line? So you might guess zero. So let's confirm that. So do second quit, first off. Get yourself back to the home screen. OK? If there's anything there, you can just clear it out. So it's just looking like this. All right? And what I want to do is sum up those residuals. So if I do second stat, which is the list command, and I go across, um, there is something I look for. Go to the math menu right there. So I did second stat. I went across to math. And I went down to number five, which is sum. The sum command will sum any list I want. Now, I put my residuals in list three. Okay. I also put them in list four. It actually doesn't matter which list I pick. I can do second L3, close parenthesis, and hit enter. And I get this number. Now, if you look carefully at that number, oh, it's not zero. But yes, it is. If you're careful, that's correct. Look, we take a look at it. Um, that number right here means 1 times 10 to the negative 11th power. It's scientific notation. So that means point 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with a 1. So basically, that's 0. And that's something you should know. The sum of the residuals is always 0. So let me ask you uh, another question. So suppose I told you that when x equals 102, the residual is negative 0 0.05. Find the observed value, or the observed y value, when x equals 102. Do this little thought I'm asking you to do is use residuals in reverse. Let's take a look at this problem. First off, I'd like to get my line of best fit. So I'm going to press y equals and have a look at it. Um, there's a lot in there. There's something else in here. I'm just going to clear out y2 for a second. Right in here, it looks like it's 1.657. Actually, let's just take this to the other page here. Um, so we have y hat equals 1.657 plus, let's go to the right a little bit, point 1133, point 1133x. Okay, we knew we were interested at x equals 102. And we also know that a residual is equal to the observed value minus the predicted value. Now you know ahead of time that you're going to be missing the observed, va the observed value, the observed y minus y hat. This thing here is what I'm looking for. So I'm not surprised that that's missing. However, I do know the residual. The residual is given to be negative 0.05. The question is simply, how do you get the predicted value? Well, I want the predicted value when x equals 102. So all I have to do is take 102 and plug it into that line of best fit, and I'll get an answer. Now, I can get the calculator to do that for me. I go back to the calculator. I can do a number of things. If I press, um, for example, I do second quit, I can just do the following. I can hit vars, y vars function y1, open parenthesis, 102, close parenthesis, and that will plug 102 into y1 for me and give me an answer. The other way you could have done is gone to the graph and traced, so I'll show you that too. You hit enter, you get a predicted value of 13.214, so this is going to be negative 0.05 equals y minus 13.214. Four, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly. Yep. And it's simple now. All I have to do is add that. Plus 13.214. Plus 13.214. And we get an answer. 13.164 is the observed value. Okay. Back to the calculator. The other way you could have gotten this, if you go to stat plot, Make sure you have a plot with the original um, X and Y list. So in the Y list here, I'm going to get rid of the residuals and put back the Y values. There it is, L2. And I'll press Zoom 9. And I'll see the, the points and the line of best fit. If I press the Trace button, you'll notice if you look in the upper left, it says P1, L2, L, L1, L2. That means I'm on the plot. If I hit the down arrow, I end up on Y1. Okay. So uh, we said x was 102. There's only one problem with that. If I do 102, enter, uh, there we go, 13.214, just like we expected. So one more thing that I'd like to show you. It turns out that if you know something about your data sets, you can get the line of best fit without having to resort to a uh, regression. Okay, so here are some facts for you that are, are kind of fun to know and, and help you out a lot. Your y, your y hat equation line looks like this. Y hat, your line of best fit, looks like a plus bx. And it turns out there's a formula for slope. B can equal 
um, r times s and y over s of x, where s of y is the standard deviation of the y values, and s of x is the standard deviation of the x values. R is the correlation. Okay, and B is obviously just the slope. Okay. And then there's one more important fact that you should know. So this is sort of like fact number one. Fact number two, every least squared regression line passes through the point x bar comma y bar. So if you know what x bar and y bar equal, you know the line has to go through that point. So in this example, we already knew that the correlation was 0.9999. So it was, it was very, very strong. Uh, what we need to go find is a couple more things. So we need to go find x bar and s of x, and then also find y bar and s of y. But we can do that in the calculator pretty quickly. So we go back to the calculator, and we go to stat edit, just so we remember where things are. Um, we go over to list 1. List 1 has the x values. So press stat, go to calc, one variable statistics, second one. This is like going back to chapter one for a moment. Hit enter, you'll have x bar, which is 840, and s of x is 802.7. So let's go right, make notes of that. This was 840, this is 802.7. So you can see now, we at least have we have s of x for the denominator of our slope over here, so we'll know that piece now. And then we also have x bar, so we have those two things. All right, let's go and find y bar and s of y. So now we're going to do stat, calc, one variable statistics. And this time we're going to do list two because that's where the y values are. We hit enter, we get 96.83. And then we get an S of X of 90.953. Okay. So now we're ready. With these things, we can actually get our slope. So it's going to end up being B equals 0.9999 times S of Y over S of X. 90.953. Sometimes people forget what, what thing goes on top, s of y over s of x. Uh, which one, they have to remember that. Just like normal slope, delta y goes on top, y is usually on the top, and change in x is on the bottom. So um, it's the same thing here, so to speak. The standard deviation of y goes on top, the standard deviation of x goes on the bottom. Okay? All right, so you could take a minute <coughs> to divide those. You'll get B equals, I believe, 0.1133. So now you have your slope, which is the slope we expected to get. Let's look at our line of best fit. We know the equation is Y hat equals A plus BX. We also now know B, so we can plug that in. So we get Y hat equals A plus 0.1133X. Okay. I'd love to know what A is, that y-intercept, but I can get that because of fact number two. Second fact says that every least squared regression line passes through the point mean of x, mean of y. So we have those, don't we? We look, here's the mean of x right here, and here's the mean of y right here. So we can sub those in because we know the line has to pass through those points. So 96.83 equals A plus 0.1133 times 840. And then I can solve that for A. If we do, we get A. So 1.658, 
that numbers actually should be familiar to all of us. So finally, we get y hat equals 1.658 um, plus 0.1133x. So we can get the LSRL in a situation where we're given facts like correlation, standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, x bar, and y bar. So we have those things, those five things. We can get the LSRL without having to go and use um, linear regression function inside the calculator.